to show it's June and it's time for the next installment in our 2019 folk art calendar blanket. What are we going to do this month? This month we are going to build a whole town! <laughs> I have been looking forward to this all year. I'm so excited about this part. We're going to show you how to make three different versions of these cute little houses, um, some of the main fixtures that you can use to personalize them, and a few little embroidery techniques that you can just go absolutely nuts with. You can put little potted plants in front of your houses, you can add some more trees in here if you want to. We're going to show you all of that in the layout. As always, you want to use the same fiber yarn and the same weight category yarn that you've been using for your blanket all along. You want to stick to the same hook size too, that way everything will size properly and fit together. Because we've done some appliques already so far this year, we're going to gloss over things like how to sew them onto the blanket, and if you need refreshers you can check the previous videos on that. But we are going to use a couple of new techniques today. We're going to try using the half double crochet foundation row and the double crochet foundation row. We have tutorials for how to do those. Uh, we'll put links in the description box down below. You can definitely give them a try. If you're still a little uncomfortable though using those two uh, foundation rows as starters, I'm also going to walk you through the number of chains you need to take um, in order to start the little pieces. But we will get there when we get there. In the meantime, we will grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up an entire town together. Each of the little houses takes up around 30 grams of yarn in total. That's about 55 yards of a medium size 4 weight yarn. A little bit more for the tall houses. They're taller but they're narrower, so maybe 40 grams, um, maybe 60 to 65 uh, yards of a, for a taller house, and that's just sort of for the house color and the roof. You're going to need smaller amounts, scrap amounts of, of color for the windows, the doors, the doorknobs, maybe if you're going to add some little details and whatnot. So you can really raid your scrap heap for this particular project. We're going to stick to the same fiber category. I'm using 100% acrylic, and I'm going to use mainly the same size, so a size 4 or a medium weight, but for little tiny details, you can go down or up a size category and have some fun with it. So you can really stash dive for this particular project. You're going to want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and we're using the same hook as well. It's a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can start building some houses. Visit our shop and purchase a pattern. You'll help support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. Just a couple of quick construction notes before we begin. The one-story house is essentially the exact same build. If you want a front-facing roof like this one, which I will be demonstrating, I will tell you the row at which you will change color. If you do not want a front-facing roof, you want your roof to be sort of angled on the side like this one, you will not change color. You will use your house color all the way through, but I'll talk you to that point when we get there. Same thing with the taller two-story house. I will be showing you how to build this one at the same time. I am going to be constructing this one all in one color, but if you wanted a front facing roof, I will tell you what row to change colors on. This little roof edge that we have on all three is the same concept on both styles, but we put it on afterwards. So the first thing we do is build the main part of the house. For a quick reference, I will be making a one story house in a rose color and a two story house in a beige color. So just to help keep track, one story is in rose, two story is in beige. I've used the half double crochet foundation row method for my houses. If you're still unclear about how to do the half double crochet foundation row, we do have a quick tip or a quick fix tutorial on how to do that. There's a link to it in the description box down below. I highly recommend you give this a try. It's a fun shortcut to use, but if you're totally uncomfortable with it or it's still a bit beyond your ken because you're very new to crochet, I'll still give you the foundation chain count as well. But we are using half double crochet stitch throughout for these little houses. If you are building a one-story house, you want to begin with a half double crochet foundation row of 18 stitches. If you are using the chain method to begin, so a foundation chain row, you want to begin with 19 chains and then for your first row you will half double crochet into the second chain from the hook and half double crochet all the way back. So both times you are starting with a stitch count at the end of row one of 18 stitches. That's for the one-story house. 
With a two-story house, if you're foundation chaining, you could begin with a foundation chain row of 15, turn half double crochet into the second stitch from the second chain from the hook and all the way back. You should have a stitch count of 14. And if you are using the foundation, so the half double crochet foundation method, you want to just do a foundation half double crochet row of 14 in total. So I will be using that method, but both methods work. So whichever one you like best is the one you're going to use. Whether you used the half double crochet foundation row method or you chained and then turned and half double crocheted back, at the end of row one, you should have 18 half double crochet for a one story house or you should have 14 half double crochet for a two story house. For both houses, so in both houses cases, everything is the same from here on out. Your stitch count will be 14 every row for the two story house, it'll be 18 every row for the one story house until we get to the roof. At the end of every row, so if you've gotten to the end of your foundation row or you've gotten to the end of row one, you want to chain one and turn and you're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way back. So whether you're making the one story or the two story, everything is half double crochet. You're going to chain one, turn at the end of each row. We're all at the end of row two. You should still have 14 stitches for a two story house or 18 stitches for a one story house. At the end of every row, you're going to chain one and turn. For the one story house, you, this is rows one and two completed. Rows three through seven will be exactly the same thing. Chain one and turn at the end of every row, half double crochet all the way across. So rows three through seven are exactly the same. For the two story house, you are going to be working rows three through 14 exactly the same way. So chain one and turn at the end of every row, half double crochet in each stitch across, Rows 3 through 14 are exactly the same. As I'm nearing the end of my seventh row on my one story house, I just want to point out too, to remind everyone, that the last stitch in your row will sometimes be pulled down the edge a little bit. So don't miss it. You want to make sure you've always got the same stitch count per row. So we're always using half double crochet. The one story house has 18 stitches in each row. The two story house has 14 stitches in each row. And remember when that last stitch might just be kind of pulled down the edge a little bit. So don't miss it. All right. This is the one story house. This is rows one through seven. Remember a half double crochet foundation row counts as your chain and row one. So row one is the first row of half double crochets you made, whether you half double crocheted back over a foundation chain row, or you created the half double crochets and the chains at the same time in a half double crochet foundation row. So that's row one. Rows one through seven, or rows one through 14 is where we should be for either house, so two story, one story. I will be changing colors here. So if you want a front facing roof, and once again, that's this little guy here. So a front facing roof means that the, the sort of the top half of your house, whether it's the one story or the two story, is all roof color. If you're doing that for either one, then this is the last row of the house color you work. So for me, on a a solid colored, I'm going to change to a roof color now for my one story house, but I'm going to continue uh, with the house color for my two story house, so I will not be changing. But if you were, at the end of row 14, you would do exactly what I'm doing here. So I've snipped my yarn, I fastened off, and I'm going to flip it over because now I want to join my yarn and work all the way back. At the end of row 14, for the two story, you would do the same thing if you wanted to change colors to have a front facing roof. Otherwise, for the one story or the two story, if you're not changing colors, chain one, turn. So if you're not changing colors, regardless of which house you're making, chain one, turn and work a solid row of half double crochet all the way back. So once again, row 15 for the two story house will have 14 stitches in it and row eight 
For the one story house, we'll have 18 stitches in it. And I'm just sort of getting started with my two story. So if that's what you're doing, you're not changing colors, chain one turn, continue your half double crochet. If you are changing colors to put on a front facing roof, grab your roof color. I'm going to use this nice soft gray. You're going to begin with a slip knot on your hook. Pick up your house, make sure that the fastened off knot is now on the end because this is where we're joining our yarn. So right there in that first stitch, we're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch. And you could have woven in your tail if you want. I like to work over top of them as I crochet. Chain one to begin as though you were just finishing the last row and chaining one to turn. Half double crochet in the same stitch that you joined in. And then just continue to half double crochet as normal all the way across. That's the end of row 15 for the two story or the end of row eight for the one story. And now comes the fun part. We are going to start taking our house and turning it into that quintessential little house shape. So we're going to be decreasing on either end of each row going forward, no matter which house you're doing, if it's the one story or if it's the two story. So now remember, every row going forward, we are decreasing on each end. And what's a decrease? Well, I'm glad you asked. You're always going to chain one and turn, so it doesn't matter which house you're doing, always chain one and turn. Here's the decrease. We're gonna half double crochet two stitches together. So you yarn over, and begin a half double crochet in that first stitch, pull up that loop, but before you do anything, and we don't want this to be too thick, we're going to find the next stitch and just pull up a loop in that. So across those two stitches, you'll have four loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull back through everything. That's a half double crochet two together. At the end of each row going forward, you're also going to work the same half double crochet two stitches together decrease. Now remember that last stitch is sometimes a little hard to see. It kind of wants to pull down the side. And once you're working on top of previous decreased stitches, it will be even more pronounced sort of down the edge. But when you get to the last two stitches in the row, no matter which house you're doing, it's all the same, you begin so by yarning over and you begin in the first stitch as though you were going to do a regular half double crochet, don't do anything else. Just move to that last stitch or that second stitch, pick up a loop in it. You should still have four loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull back through everything. So now you've worked a decrease or a half double crochet two stitches together at both the beginning and the end of the row. You're gonna do exactly the same thing for either house and every row from here on out is going to be the same. You chain one, you turn, you begin with a half double crochet, two stitches together. You half double crochet all the way across to the last two stitches. Remember that last one is sometimes a little difficult to see. It wants to curve down and you half double crochet the last two stitches together. Whichever house you're doing, it's exactly the same. I'll let you work at that for a little while. Once you're down to a four stitch row, that's your second last row. So once you're down to four stitches, you're one row away from being finished. So regardless of which one you're doing, two story or one story, at the end of that second last row, like every other row, chain one, turn, and you're decreasing the first two stitches and the last two stitches, which means that you're working two half double crochet, two stitches together, stitches. <laughs> so you half double crochet the first two stitches together, and then you half double crochet the last two stitches together. That gives you a final stitch count of two. So the last row of each house will have two stitches in it. How does that actually work out? Well. I changed colors in row eight. So row eight, regardless of whether you changed colors or not, was the last row of solid 18 stitches in a one story house. You went from 18 in row eight to 16 stitches in row nine, and then 14, 12, 10, eight, six, four, and two. So a few more rows of decreasing for the one story house because you started with a 
longer or a more of a stitch count of 18 than in this one. So with the two-story house, you've got fewer rows of decreasing, but your last row, which would have been row 15 of solid um, regular stitching, so that would have been no decreases, just a stitch count of 14, you would have gone to 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, and then 2 at the very end. So either way, the last row on your house has two stitches in it. When you're done, you can just fasten off. We're not going to be including our sewing yarns in these houses. We're going to actually attach those later on. So you don't have to worry about leaving a long tail. You can grab your yarn needle and weave in your ends. So I'm fastening off both here. Like I said, don't need a very long tail. If you're using really slippery yarn, then leave enough tail that you can weave it in back and forth that it won't undo, but this acrylic is not very slippery. And then you can just grab your yarn needle and weave your little tails in across the back of your first and last rows. Now we're going to add our little roof edge to our houses. It's the same concept no matter which style you're doing. For a one story, you're going to join your roof color at the edge of row eight. And if you changed color, row eight is the row you changed color on. So at the edge of row eight, and you can find that by counting up eight rows, you join your color at the edge of row eight. That's for a one story. For a two story, it's the edge of row 15. So same thing, count up to the edge of row 15. You're gonna join your yarn at the edge, just underneath that row or right on the side of it. With your roof color, you're going to make a slip knot and put it on your hook. Grab your house, whether it's a one story and you're starting at the end of row eight, or it's a two story and you're starting at the end of row 15. Find the edge of that row you can use just underneath it or right on the side of it, wherever you want to just plunk your hook in. You're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch. Chain one. And you're going to half double crochet in the same place that you joined your yarn. Now we're going to work a number of half double crochets all the way up the edge. So whether it's the, the one story or the two story, the number of half double crochets doesn't matter. You are going to want to try and work the same number on either side. What you're going for is a nice even look. So you can just stick your hook in along the edge of your house, right where you feel the next stitch should go. So it's not like it's one for the edge of each row or one and a half or any of, there's no real numbered formula to this. You're just going to plunk your hook along the edge of your roof and you want to get a nice even flat ridge of half double crochet going. So here on the roof edge that I've already done, there's no real set number. I just worked half double crochets along the edge right up that raw edge, wherever they felt like they belonged best, and I have a nice flat, even edge. So that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna work all the way up to just below that, those top two stitches there, you're gonna work just to below that. And once you've worked all the way up to the just below that top stitch at the end of your last row, you're gonna count them all up so that you have an idea of how many stitches you should work going down the other side. All right, I have 14 half double crochet running up the edge of my house. I'm gonna to aim to have at least that many going down the other side, but if you find one or two more or one or two less, it gives you the same balanced look. And what we're going for here is a balanced look. I think I might have 12 stitches on this side and 14 on this side, uh, but you can't really tell because you still have this nice balanced look. So balance is what you're going for. You're just gonna use that stitch count as a guide. You've got the top two stitches from that last little row we did when we were building the house now. So we're just up to underneath those two stitches. We're gonna work across the top of the house. Each of those two stitches left at the end of that last row are gonna get three half double crochet each. So it doesn't matter whether you're working on a one story house or a two story house. We're gonna treat that top point the same way. You're gonna work three half double crochets into each of those two stitches, and that's gonna give us a nice rounded top peak to our little roof. So three half double crochet in each stitch, and you get this nice curving little roof. And now you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna work down this edge, 
plunking in a half double crochet wherever it feels like it should just naturally go, whether you're picking up the edge of a loop or you're wrapping it all the way around the edge of an entire stitch, don't worry about it. Just focus on putting your hook where you think the next stitch should naturally go. Aim for the similar stitch count as this side because that will help give it balance, but you still want to achieve a nice flat even look. So if it's a few more or a few less, it doesn't matter. And I'll catch up with you when you get back down to the other edge of row 8 or row 15. Once you've worked an even uh, stitch, not necessarily a stitch count, but just a good number of stitches all the way down that other side to create a nice balanced looking roof, work the last stitch in the edge of row 8 for a 1 story or row 15 for a 2 story. And before you're finished, work one more half double crochet in the same stitch as your last stitch. So you're going to work two half double crochet in your last little place to put a stitch wherever that ends up being. Two of them, because that's just going to help bring that little edge down and make it even. And you'll notice that because we joined with a chain, a slip stitch in a chain one, you have sort of a little nice curled soft edge to one side. So the way to balance that out is to make sure there's two stitches in that last spot. So two stitches in the last spot. And that is the roof. You can leave yourself a nice long tail because we are going to sew down our roof, the roof part of our applique with the color, the same color. And when we do go to sew these onto our, our blankets, you'll be sewing around the roof with the roof applique color and you'll be cutting more of that yarn that was your house color and starting here and just working all the way around the edge. But we'll get to that when we sew them on. But that's how you put the little roof edge on your little house and now it's ready for all of its little decorations. You can do just about anything to make your little houses absolutely unique, but there's some basic structural pieces we're going to show you here. The front door and the windows and a couple of little embroidery techniques that you can use to just play with the design of the front of your house. So maybe your house has got one window, maybe two, maybe you've got two doors, uh, maybe you've got extra windows up top. I'm also going to show you how to make this cute little chimney piece so that if you want to add a chimney to the tops of any or all of your houses, you can do that too. But let's start with the front door. You can use any color you want for your front door and you need a little tiny wee bit of yarn for the doorknob. And we're going to put that on after we've made the door. Um, it's a very small, small amount of yarn, so any color from your stash will be just fine so long as you feel it's a good front door color. I'm going to make a white front door for my little rose-colored cottage. I'm using the half double crochet foundation row. If you're still having trouble with that, you can make a slip knot like the rest of us and chain five to begin. And then half double crochet into the second chain from the hook and each chain back. If you're going to use the half double crochet foundation method, you're going to half double crochet foundation four stitches. So all of us want to arrive at a stitch count of four. All right, whether you've half double crochet foundationed four stitches or you chained five and half double crocheted back for a total of five, or I should say four stitches, we should all be at the same stitch count, which is four. We're all going to chain one, turn our work, and half double crochet back across those four stitches. You're going to chain one turn at the end of each row, and you're just going to do five rows in total. So this is the end of row two right now. Just working that last stitch there. So that's two rows of half double crochet. You're going to chain one turn and work three more rows of half double crochet. So your door will be four stitches across in each row and five rows tall. Four stitches wide and five rows tall is how your door should look. Give yourself a bit of a sewing tail, so enough yarn to sew all the way around your door, because that's what you're going to use to sew it down eventually to the front of your house. Fasten off, take a moment, grab your yarn needle and just weave that short tail in across the back of those stitches in that first row. 
Now we want to add a little doorknob to our front door. So you're going to take your yarn needle and a length of doorknob color. You do not need very much yarn for this. We're going to make a French knot and we're going to use French knots all over the place to decorate our doors and uh, the front of our houses. If you want to put some flowers in a flower box, the French knot is a great little embroidery trick. Um, it helps you do a lot of neat little shapes. So what you're going to do is just put a bit of yarn in your yarn needle Bring your needle up through the area on the front from back to front on your door where you want your doorknob to be. Don't bring your yarn all the way through, leave a little bit behind it. And then I find it helps to lay it flat on my working surface or my knee, wherever I happen to be working. And you're going to take your hook, you're going to lay it down on top of your piece of fabric and you're going to wrap your yarn around the end of your hook four, five, or six times. And if you feel like it's coming out a little bit, just grab that little tail and bring it back down to the edge. You want to hold on to the last little loop that you made. So I've got a pretty good grip on it here. Hold on to the last loop, pull your needle through nice and tight. You can always tug it back down into place from behind and that's what you should have. You should have a little, looks like a little um, coiled up snail. It's so darn cute. I love French knots. They're one of my favorite embroidery techniques. Then you just take the other end of your yarn and you go down not through the same hole that you came out of because you don't want to accidentally run the risk of your doorknob being pulled through to the back. Just hop over top of a piece of a stitch, a hole stitch, doesn't matter. And then you can flip your door over, tie those two ends together nice and tight, two, three times, and then trim any excess. You don't have to weave anything in because you're just going to be sewing this down on top of your little house. And <laughs> there's your door with a little doorknob. Next we're going to make some window pieces and we're going to do a little embroidery after we've made these and we've sewn them down. So I'm going to get to the little crossbars. You can do one bar, two bars, or no bars. It's up to you. But first we're going to make the actual shape. So grab your window color and we'll get started on that. I'm using a light yellow for my windows. We're going to begin exactly the same way we did for the door. So your windows are also going to be four stitches across, but only three rows tall. We're still using half double crochet. So if you feel you need to chain a foundation row, you're going to chain five and then half double crochet into the second chain from the hook and all the way back until you have four stitches. If you're using the half double crochet foundation row trick, like I am, you're going to work four half double crochet foundation stitches. Whether you did the foundation row of half double crochets or you chained and then half double crocheted back, at the end of row one, we should all have four half double crochets. We're all going to chain one and turn our work. And now we're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way back. That will be the completion of row two. Chain one, turn, half double crochet across those four stitches again, and that will be row three. So that's all there is for the little window. Your windows will be four stitches across in each row and only three rows high. So that's four stitches across and three rows high. That's a window. You can make as many of them as you want. Remember, you're going to leave a sewing tail on these as well. So enough yarn that you can sew all the way around the perimeter of your window. And then take a moment to weave the short tail back and forth across the back of that first row. Some of you may also want to add a chimney. And so if you're going to add a chimney, you can do whatever you want. You can make it red for red brick. You can make it the same color as your house, or you can make a completely different color. It depends on how you see a chimney. But if you want to add a chimney, we'll show you how to do that too. Whether you're adding a chimney to a one-story house, a front-facing uh, roof house, or a two-story house, it's exactly the same thing. I'm going to use the same rose-colored yarn as my house. And we're going to use the foundation double crochet stitch. If you're uncomfortable with this, we do have a link in our description box to the tutorial we did on that. Or you can just chain five to begin and then double crochet into the second chain from the hook and all the way back. You want four double crochets. If you're going to do the double crochet foundation row, you 
basically start it just like you did with the half double crochet. You anchor, you chain one, and then you work a half double crochet. You want four of these if you're going to use the half double crochet foundation row. Whether you worked four double crochet foundation stitches, there they are there, one, two, three, four, or you chained five and then double crocheted back into the second chain from the hook and in each of the ones that followed, all of us should have four double crochet stitches. That's it for the little chimney. That's all you need. Just leave yourself enough of a tail that you can sew all the way around your chimney. Fasten off and take a moment to weave in that short tail across the back. You can make all your major pieces and set them out on your little house, arrange them how you like, or you can make your pieces as you need them. I've got uh, a couple of windows and doors ready to go here. You can pin them into place when you've decided that you like the arrangement. And before you do any major decorating, you wanna work on your big pieces first. So your windows and your doors are the major parts of your house. Don't worry so much about your little um, chimneys. We're gonna actually sew them down as we're sewing down the house to the rest of our blanket. But if you want it there to sort of complete the picture while you're designing, then go ahead and tuck that in. Once you've settled on the positioning of your pieces, you can sew them down. So you can pin them into place or just hold them in place like I do. And you can sew all the way around using either the top facing loops of the stitches, which I find nice and quick. You wanna make sure that they're sewn down nice and firmly. So sew all the way around the perimeter, or if you find this a little bit cumbersome, because this is not going to show through to the back, since this whole thing will be sewn down to your blanket, you can sew all the way back and forth through the entire piece of house fabric if you want to. So it's entirely up to you, whichever sewing method you find easiest, just make sure that you sew all the way around the perimeter, and then you can knot and weave in your tail at the end, or you can just leave them to the back of the house uh, because it's not going to show when we sew them down. Once you have your major pieces sewn down, you can start doing extra decorating. So I'm gonna show you how to just simply border a window and put either in a double pane or a single pane look. And then we'll also look at some fun little embroidery that you can do to make it look like you've got some flowers sitting in a flower box underneath your windows. You can decide on a color that you wanna frame your windows in. You might wanna use your roof color, you might wanna use your door color, you might wanna use a color that's completely different. I'm just gonna use black for demonstration purposes. I find it easiest to start in the top left corner, but you can start in any corner you want. You want to bring your needle from back to front, out at the corner, just a little ways away from the edge of your window. Do not bring your yarn all the way through. Leave a little bit of it back there that you can use as a tying knot later. And then you're just going to do some really simple straight long stitches. You're gonna bring your needle down to the bottom corner. And then out at the other corner. Try to be out just a little bit from your window. Bring your needle right down through the same place that you brought, you finished your last long line with. If you're putting in a single pane, bring your needle out in the middle at the bottom of your window. And then right up across the middle of your window, down through the middle of the other side. Straight and as up and down as you can do. Then you can bring your needle back up through that same corner that you started in and do the other two edges. If you want to add a second crossbar, once you're finished all of your edging, you can just bring it up in the middle of one side and jump across, go straight down through the other side, as straight as you can manage. Then. You just flip it over, tie your two ends together, and trim any excess. You don't have to worry about weaving in any ends because this is not going to show. If you want to add some flowers to a little flower box at the bottom of your windows, you can just use little different colors of yarn and do French knots like we did with our front door. I've added a couple of French knots in pink and a couple in yellow, 
three yellow over here and a couple of pink. And then I grabbed a long length of green yarn and I just did little short straight stitches from back to front, back to front, in between them, just to give the illusion that there was a bit of greenery around them. So from a distance, it looks like there's little flowers with some greenery. Nothing fancy on the back. I just tied my ends nice and tight and trimmed where I needed to. Like I said, none of this is gonna show because the whole thing's gonna get sewn down to your blanket. You can also can think, can think of adding other little things, like some people like to put decorations on their houses, like those cute little stars or flags or anything else. So if you wanted to come up with other little appliques and decorate your house however you wanted to, go right ahead. These are your houses, this is your little town, and you can dress up these little houses as much as you like. I just advise that you do all of your embroidery, your applique, you do all of that fancy little detail work before you put your house on your blanket because it makes it easier to manipulate all of those little details when you're just working with the little house and not trying to work with it on top of a blanket. Now comes the unbelievably fun part. You get to plan out your little town. So I've gone with six houses. There's my little blue house. I put a little bit of creeping ivy on it. He's gonna sit on the very end, the sort of the very edge of town. I've got all my other little houses in between. There's my little rose colored cottage. She's gonna sit on the far left side. Not all of my houses have chimneys and I haven't sewn my chimneys down because they're going to be tucked in underneath my house as I sew. You don't have to completely fill your main street with houses. Mine's gonna be completely filled with houses, but maybe you're from an area where there's fewer houses and more trees. What if you put in a couple of trees? We've got two different tree patterns. You could use evergreen trees or deciduous trees. You could have one or two, you could layer them. You could maybe have them sitting just in front of your houses, or you could have a house sitting just on top of it. Um, you can obviously change the colors of your trees so that they stand out a little bit more uh, if you're going to put some on your main street, but you don't have to completely pack your main street full of houses. It's your little town, go nuts. Once you've decided how where, and where you want all of your little bits and pieces for your main street to go, it's time to pin them into place and sew them down. When you go to sew down your house, you're going to need to add some house color to match up for your three edges so that you're not sewing with the roof color. That's why we left a long tail on the roof. That is just for sewing down the roof part of the house. You want to get some more of your house colored yarn and that's what we're gonna sew down the edge of our house with. So you can do a couple things. You can maybe anchor it on the back, grab a couple stitches from the back so that you don't really see the anchor. And you can tie a knot Always tie at least twice so that it doesn't come undone. So there it is. Now my yarn is anchored to the back of my house and that knot will not show through to the front. Place your house in its position. If you pinned all your houses down, then your houses will all sort of be in alignment here. I want my houses to sit just a little bit down so that there's a little, about a, a, a solid row of double crochet uh, sitting there between the green and the brown transition period. Then you can pin it into place or hold it and start sewing by picking up a loop of a stitch on your blanket and the corresponding edge piece of your house. Just work away at it nice and slow. If you're holding it in place as you sew like I am, just put it back down every once in a while flatten it down, make sure that you haven't accidentally sort of gone crooked or you're sewing it sort of sideways. You can take your time. You're gonna sew all the way around those three sides with the house color, fasten off, weave in your tails or stuff it underneath your house. And then you're going to do the same thing by sewing down the roof. When it's time to sew on a chimney, I recommend you sew down the main part of the house first and before you get to the actual roof, at least now your house will be firmly positioned because you've sewn the main part of it or at least half of it. You can then take your little chimney and tuck it just underneath the roof where you think you want it. Maybe it's a little down here, maybe it's up higher, wherever you want it. You just want a little bit of it showing. Tuck it down, make sure when you place the roof flat 
there's no little gaps showing. And then you can peel back your roof and either pin or hold your little bit of a chimney into place and just start sewing it down. Same method, you wanna pick up the loops, top facing loops on the blanket, go through the corresponding part of the stitch on your little bit of applique. Try to make sure it doesn't move. If you're unsure, after you've worked one or two stitches, just lay your roof back down and make sure nothing's moved. Then, once you're finished with your little chimney, you can go ahead and sew down the rest of your roof. And there you go, an entire town. <laughs> now remember guys, this is a year long project. So don't feel that you have to speed through any of the parts of it. You can work on it for as long as you like. And definitely when we're doing things as big as an entire town, I really want you to enjoy the process. Have fun designing those little houses, picking out colors, placing your windows and doors, adding little bits of flowers, maybe even flower pots, creeping ivy, whatever it is that says home or town to you guys. Enjoy it. This is supposed to be fun and it's definitely going to be a work of art. And remember, you want to put your own personal spin on it. So have fun and don't feel you need to rush. I am having so much fun putting this blanket together. We hope you're having fun doing it too. Please consider popping into our Etsy shop and picking up a crochet pattern. It really helps support our show and we really appreciate it when you do. That's it for this week, everybody. We hope you had fun making these little houses along with us and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye. Hi, everybody. Miss Stern Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.